The next unit that we're going to be starting is all about acids and bases. It's also going to include some equilibria, so if you are not still 100% sure on your equilibria skills, you might need to go back and watch those previous videos. There's three definitions to what an acid and an actual base are. There are Arrhenius, Bronsted-Lowry, and the Lewis definition. The first one is the Arrhenius definition, which says that a substance, when dissolved in water, increases the concentration of hydrogen ion. A base is any substance, when dissolved in water, which increases the hydroxide ion. They, these are like the most basic definition of what an acid and a base actually are. Bronsted-Lowry's definition is a little bit more involved. It says that acids are proton donors and bases are proton acceptors. Remember, a hydrogen atom has one proton and one electron. If I remove that electron, then what's left? Just a proton. So H positive really is just a proton. So we're still dealing with that H positive that was mentioned in Arrhenius. But here we have nitrous acid. Notice what happens to nitrous acid. It goes from HNO2 to NO2 which means it lost that hydrogen. It was a proton donor, therefore it's considered an acid. Look at water. Water goes from H2O to H3O positive. This, by the way, is called hydronium. H3O positive is called hydronium. It goes from H2O to H3O, so it gained a hydrogen. It gained a proton. It's a proton acceptor, so it's considered a base. Now, this arrow right here means equilibria, so that means that this can go in both directions. So if we're going in this direction from right to left, look what happens to nitrite here. It goes from NO2, negative 1, and becomes HNO2. So it gains a hydrogen, it gains a proton. So this is what we call our conjugate base. Conjugate meaning opposite of this guy right here. This is our acid. This is its conjugate base. What happens to hydronium going in this direction? It goes from H3O positive to H2O. It lost a hydrogen. It lost a proton. It's a proton donor, so that's called an acid, so we call it the conjugate acid to water. Let's do another one. This one right here, this is ammonia. What happens to ammonia? It goes from NH3 to NH4 positive. It becomes ammonium. So therefore, it gained a hydrogen. It gained a proton. It's a proton acceptor, so that's called a base. Water, in this scenario, goes from H2O to OH negative, hydroxide. So it lost a hydrogen. It lost a proton. It's a proton donor, so it's considered an acid. Once again, this is at equilibrium. So what happens to ammonium going in the opposite direction? It goes from NH4 positive to NH3, so it gives off a hydrogen. It gives off a proton. So therefore, this is considered a conjugate acid, the conjugate acid to ammonia. What happens to hydroxide? Hydroxide turns into H2O, so it gains a proton, so that's considered a base, conjugate base to water. Now, if you'll notice, Water can behave as a base. It can also behave as an acid. I don't know if you remember this from last year, but that is called amphoteric. Anything that can behave as both an acid and a base, acid and a base, is called amphoteric. The stronger the acid, the weaker its conjugate base, and vice versa. The weaker the acid, the stronger its conjugate base. Well, what are the strong acids? Well, let's do this first. What is the conjugate base for hydrogen carbonate or bicarbonate? Well, first of all, if I'm asking what is the conjugate base, then that means that this is behaving as an acid. If this is behaving as an acid, then it's going to give off this hydrogen right here. So what is the conjugate base? It would be carbonate, CO3, negative 2. This one right here says, what is the conjugate acid for HPO4, or hydrogen phosphate? Well, if it's asking for the conjugate acid for this right here, then that means that this is behaving as a base. What do bases do? Bases 
except protons. They accept hydrogens. So what is the conjugate acid for HPO4? It's going to be H2PO4 negative 1. We'll practice more of those tomorrow. There's one more definition. Lewis acids. Lewis acids and Lewis bases are a little bit different. Uh, acids, according to Lewis, are electron pair acceptors. Bases are electron pair donors. So if you'll notice right here, this is ammonia. Ammonia has this extra pair of electrons right here. This is hydrogen or hydrogen ion. And what's going to happen is this extra pair is going to be donated to that hydrogen right there. So therefore, according to this, it's an electron pair donor. So this would be considered the base, and that would be an electron pair acceptor. Therefore, it becomes an acid. And if you'll notice, it turns into this right here, which is called ammonium. Okay? A lot of the coordinate complex ions are Lewis acids and Lewis bases, where the ligand, this would be the ligand, remember, is going to represent the base. They're going to be the electron pair donors. Don't forget what the strong acids are. You have these memorized. They ionize 100%. That means they give off 100% of their hydrogen. That's what makes them strong acids. Hydrochloric, hydrobromic, hydroiotic, nitric, sulfuric, chloric, and perchloric. Don't forget there's polyprotic acids. That means they have multiple hydrogens. H2SO3, which is called sulfurous acid, is diproduct. H3PO4, which is phosphoric acid, is triproduct. Matter of fact, up here, hydrochloric acid would be monoproduct. Strong bases, if you'll remember, are on the periodic table. They're the group 1A hydroxides and the heavy group 2A hydroxides. That includes calcium, strontium, and barium. And don't forget, it makes that B on the periodic table. Okay. And then if you'll remember from last year, there's something called the pH scale. There's also something called the pOH scale. The pH scale is based on the amount of hydrogen ion. The pOH scale is based on the amount of hydroxide ion. It goes from 0 to 14 for the pH scale, 14 to 0, the opposite, for the pOH scale. This is all based on the amount or the concentration, remember this means molarity right here, the molarity of hydrogen ion. So notice, if something has a pH of 0, that means that its hydro hydrogen ion concentration is 1 times 10 to the 0 power. If something has a pH of 7, its hydrogen concentration is 1 times 10 to the negative 7th. If something has a pH of 14, its hydrogen concentration is 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. Which one of these three numbers is the largest number? This one. Notice that the largest number of hydrogen concentration represents the lowest number on the pH scale. This is the complete same but opposite. Okay, this is going to be the pOH scale, which is based on the hydroxide concentration. And so if I have a hydroxide concentration, excuse me, a pOH of 14, my hydroxide concentration is going to be 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. 7, 1 times 10 to the negative 7, and 0, 1 times 10 to the 0. Let's see what I have here. So acids have a low pH bases have a high pH and that should make sense because notice that acids have the largest concentration of hydrogen. Bases have the lowest concentration of hydrogen. In the middle everybody likes to say that oh that's water. Yes water is an example of something that is neutral. There are other things out there that are neutral. Notice that acids have the largest concentration of hydrogen and the lowest concentration of hydroxide. Bases have the highest concentration of hydroxide and the lowest concentration of hydrogen. Okay, So acids have a low pH and a high pOH. Bases have a high pOH, excuse me, high pH and a low pOH. 
neutral stays right in the middle. And there is a relationship between this right here and that number right there, and we'll deal with that in class tomorrow.